Welcome to Conversations on the Coast, the Bay Area's premier author interview program. Today we're going to be talking about a series called The 39 Clues and the third book in the series, The Sword Thief. And the reason we're talking about that book is that the author, Peter Laurentius, has been good enough to come by. Hi there. Hey, Jim. It's really great to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, incidentally, this series and book are published by, say it, Scholastic. Scholastic. All right, we got that out. Now, the the thing that interests me about your involvement in this book is that it's, in a sense, I would say out of character. Uh, You've written some 150 or so books, all of them solo, would we say? Well, yes and no. I've written books in a lot of different series, some my own and some other people's series. But uh, yeah, that's that's. Uh, but that's mainly, right. mainly you've been a lone wolf. I've been a lone wolf, and 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 somehow they enticed you into this ten book series, with each book being done by a different author. Were you not fully awake when this was proposed? <laughs> It was a little shocking to me, too. I'd never heard anything quite like it. Usually there's one person who's the captain of the series who either writes all of the books or writes most of the books and then a ghostwriter takes over or something. This was the first time that actually they decided to have different authors putting their own stamps on different books of the series. My mind was open to it because I liked the editor at Scholastic. I liked Mm -hmm. the general idea and the opportunity to work with some of those writers was Really, really tempting. Um, uh, Rick Riordan, very, very popular children's book writer who writes a series called Percy Jackson and the Olympians, a series that I think is is really terrific. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gordon Corman, who wrote the second book, is actually a friend of mine, someone I've always uh, liked as a person and always thought he was a terrific writer. So that was uh, that was very tempting to me to to actually be able to kind of uh, mix it up with Gordon and uh, and Rick and Jude Watson who I didn't know, but I knew I knew her work. She mm-hmm. uh, writes under Jude Watson. Her real name is Judy Blundell. And this year, she won the uh, National Book Award for a young adult novel she wrote. Uh, and uh, I'd known some of her work as Jude Watson. So the personnel involved was 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 great. And I felt actually honored to be included in, in that. So the whole idea was very unusual, but really, really hard to resist right from the get-go. Well, that's... Like telling me that uh, it was hard to resist because of the folks who were going to be involved. They were quality folks. Right. That's and the, you felt, you know, comfortable. What about the overall yeah, plot? Did yeah. that attract you oh, also? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the people were, for me, uh, were, were number one because that was before I even knew what the project was about. But then when I heard what that was about, that cinched it for me because – it uh, it's a it's a fantastic idea. Rick uh, actually is the mastermind of the big plot of the series, and I love long stories that have shorter stories within them. Uh, this is an incredible treasure hunt that is a fight over the uh, inheritance of a very wealthy woman named Grace Cahill. Grace Cahill, it turns out, is the last in a line of the Cahill family, or the most recent in a line of the Cahill family that goes back 500 years. And in that family, there are four different branches. The Tomas, they're kind of the warriors. uh, They're they're the tough guys. The Janus, very creative people. The Ekaterina, the scientists, the problem solvers. And the Lucians, who are very smooth, very, very charming. And uh, throughout history, it turns out, some of the most famous people of all time have been members of these families very, very secretly. Benjamin Franklin, uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Napoleon, and various conquerors and heroes and inventors, uh, you name it. They're probably Cahills, even even some contemporary people. Michael. We're back now at the moment of launch of the series, if you will. Uh, how many of these cats got together and... Uh, what did they do? Well, um, we're talking about the plot here, yes? Yeah, well, no, I mean, before, I mean, somebody was going to write the first book. Oh, yeah. Riordan. And and somebody said, well, this is the overarching plot. And then did you guys say, oh, yeah, but wait, I don't like the idea of that, or oh, yeah. shouldn't we do something? Was oh. there that kind of discussion before Penn went to paper? Well, we bet it, no, because pretty much from the start, um, all of us, 
bought the idea. It I sounded see. really interesting because the the uh, both all of us thought that this idea of these two orphans, Dan and Amy, who are uh, who have lost their grandmother, so at this point they've really got nothing, and they they stand to inherit an enormous amount of money, a million dollars, uh, or they or they are given a choice that all of the other people in the family, and there are hundreds of them from these different branches who stand to benefit from Grace's will, they are given the choice of taking a million dollars and running with it or going on a search for 39 clues that will amass the greatest power ever known to humankind uh, that will involve a search throughout the world, different countries. And we like that, and we said, yes, let's do it. You know, 39 clues sounds like quite a story good basis for a series. When we come back, I want to look at the package that's involved in the series, 39 Clues. You're listening to Conversations on the Coast with Jim Foster. Follow us on Twitter at Jim Foster COC or send an email to Jim Foster COC at gmail.com. Today we're talking about 39 Clues, rather the 39 Clues. The third book in the series is called Sword Thief. It's written by our guest, Peter Laurentius, and the whole thing is put together by Scholastic. Now, uh, not only is this an ongoing series, but it's a serious package. As our friends at uh, Scholastic say, it's a multimedia adventure series. What do they mean by that? What am I going to get? If I go out and buy your book. Well, here's what you're going to get. A really exciting, incredible story. <laughs> That's number one. Number one. And you'll get that from book one and book two and all on down through the series or all on up through the series. But what's innovative about this, and it's something that as far as I know has has never been done before or maybe very rarely been done before is that there's an entire other world involved with the 39 clues the books of course stand on their own right um, we we are working really hard to make them the most exciting books that are out there and i think we're we're doing a pretty good job so far um but if you want more there's a whole other world uh, that is available to any of the kids who read the books or any of the adults who want to read the books at www.the39clues.com. I always tell people to put the the in there, the39clues.com. On that website, you get a whole host of things. Number one, you follow me on my book tour. I'm video blogging everywhere along the way, and we'll talk, I guess, more about that later. Yes, yes. Um, number, but the biggest, most important thing is that you get um, a chance to discover clues on your own. Now, if you go to the website without reading the books, it won't make that much sense. But once you read the books, you'll undoubtedly want more and you'll get it. You will get the chance to go on a mission. And in order to get on that mission, you you discover which branch of the Cahill family you belong to. Because it turns out you do. Once you find that out, you get a username and a password and you get a certain you get a certain number of missions and on those missions you will use information that you get in the books because there are cards included with each books and with each book and each card has certain information that you can upload you do that and you yourself go on a search for other clues that Dan and Amy don't necessarily find in the books so it's a very participatory thing it's extremely cool and very very uh, a lot of fun i've gone on this website and um it you know you not only can do all these things but also if you love the books and you want to learn more about the characters or you forget who certain person in book number one is all the information is there too so it's informational you can play a a, a board game there's just a, a, any number of things that you can do to add to the enjoyment of the book sounds like a lot of uh uh, children between the ages of 8 and 12, both boys and girls, are going to be late for soccer practice <laughs> if they if they follow your well, your, your instructions. No. Now, did we mention the, the cards inside? Yeah, each, each book has a set of cards inside the front cover, uh, and um, those cards you can use when you go onto the uh, website. And they're incredibly, they're great, they're beautiful cards, and Scholastic has spent uh, incredible uh, energy and effort in, in making this clue hunt really, really interesting. I just want to in conclude the 
important part of the list of ten. Uh, book three is by you, The Sword Thief, it's called. Book four, Beyond the Grave, is the title. Jude Watson, National Book Award winner, is the author of book four. Book five is by Patrick Carmen, best-selling author of The Land of Ilion. And book six is uh, Jude Watson again. And then we get to important book seven, uh, which does not have a title, but it does have an author, you. That's right. You're going to be a busy bee here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm already busy. Actually, I'm, I'm working on book seven uh, right now as we speak. All right. The publication schedule is, what, one book every three months, it looks like. Some of There's them, one it, in June right. and then one in August. Right. So that's two. Some of them are two one. and some of them are three. Okay. Yeah. It's amazing. It's, a, it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> now- uh, you're actually on tour for the book as we speak. Right. And while you're on tour, you're uh, sending out clues by video? That's right. Uh, and I've been uh, visiting a lot of schools in the area, and some of them have even seen some of these video blogs. I've brought it along with me. But anybody can see them. You go to the 39clues.com, and to be specific, you would go slash tour, T-O-U-R. I've got... A uh, blog that I did last week in New York City. That's where I started my search. And I'm continuing the search here in San Francisco where I've picked up another clue. Um, I think I'm going to be moving on because there's a code that I'm having a little trouble with. I'm going to be consulting with someone in Los Angeles next. And I plan to do, uh, well, I'm going to do as many as I can until I, until I crack this thing. So uh, that at least, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see how many, we'll see how many. I, I'm, I'm hoping maybe about five, but maybe, maybe more. Who knows? This isn't a series of books. This is a world, <laughs> the world yeah. of the 39 Clues. Well, but enough about the 39 Clues series. When we come back, I want to put the spotlight on The Sword Thief by Peter Larangis. Stay tuned. You're listening to Conversations on the Coast with Jim Foster. Follow us on Twitter at Jim Foster C-O-C. Or send an email to jimfostercoc at gmail.com. This is Jim Foster. The book today is The Sword Thief. It is book three in a 10-book series called The 39 Clues. The author is of book three is Peter Larangis, and the publisher of The Whole Schlamazel is Scholastic. There's a New York word for you. Yeah. I picked that up. <laughs> I want to get back to something mentioned in in the first uh, in the first segment. It seems to me that going from let's say book two to book three, that th there had to be a handoff process. Did, did something like that happen, yeah, or, or 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 did you just think of what was in book three? <laughs> Yes. I said, I'm going to predict what happened in book two, and from what I envision, I'm going to write book three. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I um, Actually, we do have to wait until the previous person finishes the book. It makes things very, very interesting because you've got to go so fast. Um, and uh, uh, Gordon, Gordon Corman, um, who's just an amazing writer, uh, he put some really interesting things at the very end of his book, book number two, which takes place in, well, a, a host of different places, one of which is Vienna uh, and Salzburg. And the, the, Amy and Dan have an amazing set of adventures in this. Well, at the very end, he has them find, uh, well, I can't actually mention in case I spoil something. He presents a discovery that Dan makes at the end of the book. And once I saw what that discovery was, I had a really good idea of what to do with it. Um, Rick had outlined the big general outline of the series, and I and he had suggested a place where book three would take place. It fit perfectly with what Gordon had done at the end of his book. Um, and those two suggestions really opened up a whole wealth of possibilities for me. I went to a certain place with Dan and Amy began my adventure and suddenly decided, aha, we need to switch places and go somewhere else. So we, I took them off, put them on a plane, and they switched places in the middle of the book. I had a great time having them hop all over the world. And yeah, I did need to know exactly what happened in book one and two. And we're all sort of on pins and needles before our books to wait till the previous author finishes. One of the things that's very evident in book three, and I, I've only read very brief pieces of the first two books, is that uh, 
people from the Cahill family have a heck of a time trying to work together. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's they're terrible. like terrible. It, it's 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 ridiculous. You know, at some point, I wanted to say, look, if you guys had worked together, we'd we'd get you know whatever clue we're we're yeah. actually looking for Play here. Play nice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the, that's it. I mean, these four branches, they are fierce. There's such incredible competition. They're at each other's throats, particularly the Lucians. They're really, really tough. And then at the edges of this whole thing is a group called the Madrigals. Nobody quite know who who those people are, but boy, they seem really, really shady. One and, of the, one, one of the people I think who tries the hardest to get folks to work together is Alistair O. And, and it, it like lasts for two and a half pages. Oh, Alistair. Alistair is one of my favorite, favorite characters. Alistair comes in and out and they never know. Like a lot of these characters, you don't know if you're going to trust him or not. I mean, he does something that makes you feel like he's your absolute favorite uncle in the world. And then all of a sudden, you know, he, he's leaving you in a collapsing building. Alistair is a very, very interesting character. And I, I actually kind of connected with Alistair. And in my book, book number three, he plays a very large role. And uh, we learn something about Alistair's past that nobody has ever known before. And it's pretty, pretty dangerous and important. And um, that's been that was a lot of fun because I was able to inject something new into the series that the other authors are going to have to deal with. <laughs> now, is it? I mean, can we say that that book three, reading the title, has something to do with swords? The sword thief? Yeah. Uh, you, you might think so. Yes, <laughs> swords and thievery. <laughs> Sounds, with like, a, with sounds healthy, like a natural enough yes, idea. With a healthy dose of the. No, um, <laughs> uh, yes, it does have to do with swords. In fact, I can tell you uh, that it has to do with a very famous historical figure, extremely powerful guy who had a real thing about swords. And Dan and Amy had to find, have to find out why he was so obsessed with swords, what he did with these swords, and how what he did had anything to do with the 39 clues. And therein lies a story that is full of surprises. The other part of uh, your book, book three, The Sword Thief, that I will remember is that uh, Dan and and his sister are two people, uh, uh, everything will befall them. Every right. difficult situation, oh, yeah. every risky, life-threatening, and I guess that's what's that's what makes them appealing to young readers. Absolutely, and they also they're all by themselves. You know, they're orphans, and their their grandmother is no longer with them. Um, it's just them and their au pair. Uh, Dan likes to say it's au pair. It's not babysitter. And uh, and <laughs> Nelly, Nelly Gomez, a great character, another one of my favorite characters, is the only other person there. It's them against the world. Well, there are a lot of wonderful people to meet in The Sword Thief. There are a lot of unbelievably exciting adventures to get into. And then there's the whole series concept and what you can learn and win. Oh, it's wonderful. The 39 Clues, The Sword Thief. That's by Peter Larangis. This has been Conversations on the Coast, and I'm Jim Foster. Follow us on Twitter at Jim Foster C-O-C, or send an email to Jim Foster C-O-C at gmail.com.